What up guys, it's Jay from TV Time with Jay, and this time we are here to review Lovecraft Country Season 1, Episode 7, Jigabobo. As per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and uh, giving my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory, you have been warned. Okay, so first things first, uh, let me start off by apologizing. I know I've missed two episodes in a row. Um, they were both really good episodes. It's just uh, the one from two weeks ago, I had family over from out of state, and uh, I did not have uh, access to my room because I got kicked out of my room because they were staying in my room, so I did, wasn't able to record properly. Uh, so that's why I missed that one and honestly last week's one was so trippy I didn't even know how to properly recap it and uh, have it make sense so I just skipped it all together but uh, both episodes were great and we get more information on uh, what happened with last week so let's go ahead and get started with the recap portion of this uh, video so this video centers all around um, a local African-American man um, in the uh, Southside neighborhood named Bobo. And also, um, it has to do with, of course, the tragic death of Emmett Till. And basically kind of a united front and show of solidarity in both the death simultaneously of you know, Bobo, a beloved member of this particular community, and of course, the horrific, tragic death of Emmett Till, one of the most, and it's weird to say the word, iconic with such a tragic situation, but probably one of the most famous public instances of the brutal, unjust murder of a young black man, and unfortunately you know, several decades later, that harsh reality still exists today. Um, but, besides the point, a lot of this, you know, it affects D pretty heavily because, of course, Hippolyta is gone. We still have no idea where the fuck she is, you know. Uh, she ascended dimensions and is, like, with those, like, alien god beings now, and is possibly becoming one of them and is now possibly an omnipotent force. I keep saying possibly because I don't really know for certain. Uh, but so she seems to be out of the picture, at least for now, because I'm not going to discount it. She could come back 11th hour, but we don't know yet. Uh, we also find out some pretty huge news with Letty. We find out that Letty is pregnant. So congrats to Letty. Um, and of course, Tick knows this because Tick traveled into the future when he was sent through the portal. Now, I don't actually believe this was Tick's future, right? Because with uh, Hippolyta, she was sent to all bunch of different dimensions, right? And I think the dimension or future Tick was sent in is an alternate timeline because you know he read the book that is written by his son and in this timeline in the book uh, you know names are different uh, D is a boy and his name is Horus which fits with the mythological name schemes of you know George's family because Hippolyta is the queen of the Amazons, and Diana is the goddess of the hunt, the Roman equivalent to Artemis. So it definitely fits with the Greek-Roman name scheme for George's family. So it's definitely uh, a matchup, but there's slight changes. Um, and if you guys read comic books at all, and uh, you can see my shelf, there's a big-ass glare, but uh, I read a lot of comics. Um, and, yeah, multiverse theory is a big thing. And I definitely think Tick did not see his future. He saw an alternate timeline version of his future where in that timeline, Christina used him as a sacrifice to become immortal. But we see already that Christina is immortal, right? Because she decides to take Ruby's advice 
and try to feel the pain that uh, you know black people feel by recreating the tragic death circumstances of Emmett Till. And it's just like, nah, she doesn't feel anything. She laughs it off because she's immortal. And I feel like, I mean, it's, I know it's on the nose, but I feel like her immortality uh, in this sense is a metaphor for her white privilege. Because, I mean, literally, that's been her superpower this entire time is white privilege. And she handed out white privilege to Ruby. And, you know, books have been a huge theme all throughout each episode of Lovecraft Country. And the big book that was featured in this week's episode was Uncle Tom's Cabinet, which, of course, you know, that's where the phrase an Uncle Tom comes from. And Uncle Tom is, of course, someone who sells out their own race for the approval of white people. And that's what Ruby has been doing with this whole potion shenanigans. Now, Ruby thinks that she's playing the system and that, you know, she's going to learn things from these people and she's going to be better. She's going to create her own space. And, you know, that's the trap a lot of these people get into, right? And I'm not going to dive into a whole philosophical and political discussion because we're just here to talk about TV. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of deeper connotations there and you could get a lot of different examples of uh, controversial figures that have been, you know, tossed around and labeled as Uncle Tom's um, just to because they've been like desperately seeking the approval of white people for so long. You know, names I will quickly throw out there. Kanye West is somebody that people talk about a lot um, as someone who just constantly aspires to be up there with the white people and like get the approval of white people which is why like a lot of you that's what a lot of people accused him of when he had the whole Donald Trump shenanigans going on and his whole slavery was a choice rant and all that stuff um you know Harriet Tubman didn't free the slaves all that um but yeah so that's what Ruby's dealing with and she's clearly being played like a cheap fiddle she really is um, but Christina does give Letty the mark of Cain, which allows her to be immortal. Uh, because, you know, it actually fits biblically because the mark of Cain uh, is the mark that Cain was given um, after committing the first murder. And so he would forever walk the earth with that brand, knowing that he is the, you know, bearer of. One of the biggest mortal sins. Obviously, Eve was the progenitor of the original sin, but uh, Cain committed the first murder, and he's not never allowed to die. He's just destined to roam the earth um, with that brand so that everyone knows who he is and what he did. Um, and that's kind of uh, pretty symbolic with uh, Christina, because, you know, she kind of wears that as a badge of honor, you know, I get what I want when I want. You know, Abel wanted that approval from Adam. Of course, she wanted approval from her father, who leads the sons of Adam. There are a lot of interesting parallels there. Uh, you know, obviously, I could go into a lot of detail. Um, so, Tick explained this whole situation to Montrose, and he and Montrose have a nice heart to heart uh, where he kind of explained his entire situation. And once Montrose finds out that, you know, he has a grandson, he decides to help Tick, you know, cast a protection spell. And, of course, you know, the cops go after D, right? D ends up getting a curse put on her where these, like, us-looking gremlins start following her and torturing her. when she's the only one that can see, her, see them. And so she is just, like, losing her sanity slowly while being attacked by these monsters which no one else can see so she just looks like she's completely insane um, and then meanwhile uh, those cops who cursed her are now rolling up on Letty's house to try and get the Ori um, and Letty herself is not being injured because the Mark of Cain protects her so the bullets are just bouncing off and so Tick rolls up to try and save Letty and of course, Letty's like, oh no, is this where Tick dies? Because Gia comes back. Yeah, Gia does come back. I know, I skipped that around a lot. Gia comes back and she's like, I don't know when you're going to die, but it's going to be soon. And so, 
you know, she tries to go run and shield Tick with her body because she has this protection from the Mark of Cain. And that's when the protection spell kicks in. And the protection spell is in the form of one of those monsters that were patrolling Lovecraft Country. But this one is under Tick's command. He is a good boy. He had himself a nice bacon breakfast and it was absolutely amazing. The CGI was actually like really really well done. I love that scene. It just it felt so cathartic. Almost as cathartic as when you know the ghost murdered those just douchey white boys um, in uh, Letty's house during the exorcism episode. So I'm very interested to see what happens to D if they can get rid of that curse. I'm sure they're going to have to go to Christina or something. Uh, Hippolyta's machine, or, you know, the machine that sent Hippolyta to another dimension, uh, was featured in the promo. We see Ruby with a gun. Uh, like, a lot of stuff is going down. We've only got two episodes left, which will bring us up to the week right before Halloween. Uh, so that is perfect timing. I've loved this show from start to finish, and uh, this continues to be amazing. But let me know your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. New shows are coming back, people. The fall season is starting slowly but surely, so I will have plenty of more content to cover for you guys. But in the meantime, in the outro card, I will leave linked my most recent review of Lovecraft Country since I didn't review last week's episode. Um, so I'll leave the most recent one that I did in the outro card as well as a video YouTube mysterious algorithm that you might like, which I hope you do. Like I said, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And um, do the usual YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, share this around. Um, and if you like anime, uh, go check out my anime channel. It's linked on my page. It's called Jay's Caldea. Definitely check that out if you're into the more weebier stuff. Uh, and if you want to just chill with me and uh, talk with me while I play video games, definitely follow me on Twitch. That is also linked down below. But until next time, this is Jay from TV Time with Jay, and I'll catch you guys in the next review. Peace. <laughs>